Welcome, boys and girls. Today we continue with another awesome lady for Women's History Month. She is a, a retired teacher from Las Vegas City Schools, and her name is Janie Chavez. And I know some of you graduates may have had her in school. But after graduating from Robertson High School herself in 1967, she attended New Mexico Highlands University where she got her teaching degree. She taught in California for a few years, but New Mexico was calling her back. She got a teaching position at RHS teaching business courses. She retired after 34 years of educational service. But back when she was attending New Mexico Highlands University, she decided to take an oil painting class with Mr. Elmer Schooley. He felt sure that she was a prodigy. A prodigy is someone who is so naturally talented at something that they become a master of that particular skill. Mr. Schooley was her mentor as a painter, and she continues to paint to this day. She is also learning how to read music and play the piano. The arts have brought much joy to her life, especially during these difficult times. She holds degrees in music and art as well. I hope she inspires you to always keep learning as she has. One of her very favorite artists is uh, Diego Rivera, who is a very gifted Mexican artist at a very young age. Later, as a young man, Diego married Frida Kahlo, also a very talented Mexican female artist in her own right. A children's book has been written about Frida, and she would love to share it with you. After the story, Janie will share some of her artwork with us. Hi, I'm Janie Chavez. Welcome to my little studio that my husband built for me. It's a place where I like to paint and hang as many paintings as I can. I uh, don't have a lot of wall space, but I try to put up as much as I possibly can. Um, some of the artists that I've been really uh, interested in, one was Diego Rivera when I was a young woman and starting my painting classes. I really loved the head of a woman that he had drawn with pencil, and I have a study of that right here that you'll be able to see in a little bit. And um, I also um, find out that he later married Frida Kahlo. This book was written by Silvia Lopez, and the illustrator is Elisa Chavarria. So I'm going to read this for you. I hope you enjoy it. She's a prolific painter, much like her husband, Diego Rivera, political painter. She also follows in his, um, his ambition to paint self-portraits of herself and her life and what she went through, uh, the pain that she suffered as a child, and you'll learn about that through this book. I hope you enjoy it. Frida Kahlo was born on July 6, 1907, just outside of Mexico City in a blue house with green shutters. Her father, Guillermo, had built the house called La Casa Azul. For his wife, Matilda, uh, he had four daughters, Matilda, Adriana, Frida, and little Christina. La Casa Azul's courtyard garden was perfect for exploring. Frida collected rocks, leaves, and insects. She wanted to be a doctor. Although at the time, girls were not always encouraged to study. One morning, Frida complained of a terrible pain in one leg. She had contracted polio, a disease that keeps muscles from growing properly. We now have a vaccine to prevent polio, but back then, nothing could be done. Frida's leg became weak. She had to stay in bed for months. How boring. 
to entertain herself, she fogged up the window with her breath and drew a door with her finger. Then she pretended to fly out and go dancing with a secret friend. Polio left Frida with a limp, but she was strong and independent. Her father encouraged her to play sports, even wrestling. Guillermo was a photographer. He, show, he would shower her with lovely buildings and would show, her, show the buildings off and taught her about Mexico's beautiful art and history. He knew his daughter was smart. Frida was accepted to an excellent high school. There were more than 2,000 boys and only 35 girls. She was a good student, but she also was mischievous. Frida once sneaked a donkey into school and let it wander through the halls. One day, an artist named Diego Rivera came to the school to paint a mural. Frida began playing pranks. She stole Diego's lunch. She made noises behind his back, but she also loved watching him work. Her eyes sparkled beneath eyebrows shaped like raven wings. When she was 18, Frida was badly hurt in an accident. After many surgeries, much of her body was placed in a cast. She had to lie on her back for months. Frida could not return to school. She set aside her dream of becoming a doctor. She could move only her arms and hands. So she decided to paint. A mirror was placed under her bed's canopy and Frida became her own model. When she felt better, she wanted to know whether her paintings were good. She found Diego Rivera high on a scaffold, making another mural, and asked him to look at her work. Diego thought Frida had talent. He began visiting La Casa Azul to discuss art. Though he and Frida were very different, Frida's parents called them the elephant and the dove, they soon fell in love and were married. Diego was older than Frida and already famous. Frida accompany, accompanied him to parties wearing traditional Mexican dresses, jewelry, and hairstyles. And despite pain from her injuries, she kept painting. Both Frida and her art were as colorful as the Mexican culture he loved. Frito and Diego traveled to several cities in the United States so Diego could paint murals. Frida was so homesick, her feelings came out in her art. One painting showed a dress floating in the air. This was her way of saying that although she lived in America, her heart was back home in Mexico. An exhibition of Frida's work in New York received a lot of attention. Later, the Lavour Museum in Paris bought one of her paintings, the first piece of art by a 20th century Mexican artist in its collection. Frida had become world famous. Frida and Diego moved to La Casa Azul. She filled the house with things she loved, ancient pottery, dolls, and lots of pets. There were rabbits, parrots, Mexican hairless dogs, a deer, an eagle, and a spider monkey named Fu Lang Chang. La Casa Azul was a lively place. Frida taught art to talented students, and she threw a party on every Mexican holiday. One day, Mexico City organized a show of Frida's paintings her doctor said she was too sick to attend. But Frida, dressed in her best outfit, hired an ambulance and had her bed brought from La Casa Azul to the show. She greeted her admirers lying down. 
Frida's health had never been good, but that didn't keep her from working every day. She made more self-portraits. She also created beautiful paintings of her family and people she admired. Frida's last painting was of watermelons, red and green, like the Mexican flag. On one side, or slice, were the words, Viva la vida, long live life. Frida Kahlo died in La Casa Azul on July 13, 1954. The home later became the Frida Kahlo Museum. Today, thousands of people visit La Casa Azul each year. Her house is still full of life. Frida would have liked that. I want to thank you for having me here to share my art and also this wonderful story of this prolific artist who was female and became famous. So, you know, we can all do what we dream we would like to do, even though it may not come out like we want it, but we always strive to do something that we love. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you to Mary Lou Griego. She has been an educator almost as long as I have. A very, very prolific young, to say young, she acts young, lady. And I thank you very much for asking me to be here with you. Thank you. I'm going to share this oil painting. It was my very first painting done in 1975. It was a still life that Elmer Sully set up with an orange backdrop, and he had various sizes of bottles of different colors. And this was my very first in mixing my colors and so forth. He was very complimentary. He said that the colors looked as good, and they looked good enough to eat. So that was my very first. This one is a study of Diego Rivera's drawing of the head of a woman. He did this at age 11. And so I did a study. You can do a study of other artists. And I did a pencil drawing of her head. I'm sure not as good as he did, but it wasn't, didn't come out too badly. Let's put that right here. I've done other paintings that are hanging on the wall. Uh, this one, of course, was of uh, I love animals as well. This one is of a woman who was um, an educator as well. She taught, she taught piano, and she also visited all the elementary schools to play piano and, and sing with students. Her name was Louise Derlich. Bless her. She passed away a few years ago. She lived to be 94. And... This painting right here is a painting done on wood. I've never painted on wood. Happens to be my mom's table, four by four piece of wood. And this young lady is already a mother and has children, but I saw a photo of, of her at Dr. Brainerd's office and I transposed it onto my uh, wooden table and so this is the young lady up in the mountains with her horse. So since then, I've done several paintings from pictures. This one here of um, Seagull, San Diego. These two are studies. And the latest, so you can see how I've ch changed in my paintings. This one of a wren done from a photo. I've done others that um, I've given away or I have sold, but uh, I want to thank Mary Lou for sparking up interest because with uh, the way things have been, I've kind of slowed down and uh, we got to keep going. We got to keep going and, and doing the things that we love. Mm -hmm.